Good evening from Gyumri. I arrived. Um, so today I'll be in Gyumri. I'll be spend uh, spending one day in Gyumri. Uh, one day does not do justice for everything that Gyumri has to offer. It's the second largest city in Armenia and it's the cultural capital. Like there's so much to take in here. So I'll try to do as much as possible in one day and then I'm sure I'll be back in the summer and I'll do more videos. Uh, and I just arrived, so I actually took a Gigi, like the cab, from Yerevan. It took about two hours and a half to get here, and it actually cost 12,000 dirhams, which is a little over $25. So, uh, you can also obviously take the train. Uh, for the ease of logistics, I chose to take the Gigi today. So, because I just arrived and I really, really want coffee, and you guys really should see this place. I'm gonna take you to a very, very cool cafe, um, Aregak Bakery, or Bakery, Cafe Bakery. Um, and we're gonna meet up with my friend Sarah there, who is the development officer, and she also does the marketing for the Emily Aregak Center and the Aregak Bakery. So I want her to tell you about this amazing concept. And I get to get have coffee. Okay, I literally did three circles in front of the bakery before I go into so I can tell you guys. This is it. We're gonna go in and I'll show you. That's my reflection. And this bakery is actually located on Apovian Street. from yes. technically birthright Armenia. You've done it before me, but then we've met through a mutual friend who, shout out to Noor, um, that I think you guys had a more of an overlap when you were volunteering and then me and her had an overlap. So yep. I got to meet you, but then you moved to Gimri and then you moved to Armenia and, and Gimri. So tell, tell, like, tell people a little bit about your move, about the volunteering, about why Gimri, why, sure. why here, and then we'll talk more about this bakery and the center and like everything that you So I work as the development and marketing officer for Argad Bakery and also for our partner center. It's a therapy center for kids with disabilities called Emily Argad. Um, so yes, we met during birthright. I am 25% Armenian, but I did not grow up with any connection to that part of me. Wow. My Armenian grandfather died when my mom was 16. Wow, okay. So it was always, you know, it was a 25% of me that I didn't know much about. And someone told me about Birthright Armenia when I was 22 years old, and I thought, I have to do this program. And so the next year, I came, and um, it was such a new culture for me. Everything was new. And someone told me, if you want to really understand Armenia, you need to spend time out of the other body. So I thought, okay. Gimri, I think at that point in 2018, it was three years ago, I think Gimri was the only other option. So yeah, Gimri. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think Ronan's was on the list. Of that. I think it wasn't full time. It now. wasn't full time. Yeah, exactly. So I thought, okay, I'll do the summer in Gimri, and then maybe go to Yerevan after that. Well, <laughs> fast forward 
like three years later, right? And I've never left Gyumri at all because Gyumri, I just fell in love with Gyumri. I did. I, uh, the people here have a special warm. Um, it's a beautiful, charming city. It's more traditional, um, traditional Armenian in its architecture. It's more preserved than Yerevan. It's cooler. I hate the heat. <laughs> oh my god, we were just talking about cooler. that. Yeah, these are much needed. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so I was placed from the beginning at Emily Aragot Center. Wow. So I've been there the whole time. And the coolest thing is, I got to be a part of the opening of this bakery. Because when I came, it was June 2018. We opened September 2018. So I got to help with the marketing and communication and stuff leading up to that and see it officially open and meet all of our staff you know, before they were, were our staff. So, wow. And we moved outside because luckily there's a lot of customers in, and this is literally my face. There's a lot of customers in, and we don't want to, you know, annoy anybody. So we're like, no. let's sit outside, and then you see the reflection of the cupcake and uh, <laughs> the architect. So, where were we? Yes, you, were you know what? I think let's just restart the story yeah. a little bit about the center. And, yeah, um, I'll start that. The, yeah, the, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so basically, Aragog Bakery flows directly out of Emily Aragog. So I'll tell a little bit about our center. So um, in 2008, there was a, a, a small kind of gathering of therapists who realized that kids with disabilities in Humri really faced a very difficult life. There's stigma against them. The city is very inaccessible. So a lot of the kids were literally just at home all day. And so they created this place called Aragog in an old house in Gyumri, completely inaccessible, but full of love. And um, started with about 40 kids, and gradually the number of kids grew, uh, so that really the house couldn't hold them anymore. And with the, uh, the help of various donors, we built this beautiful building called Emily Areka, named after a, a donor. Uh, who gave quite a lot for the building of that structure. And um, it's state of the art. There's really nothing like it in Gyumri. It's completely accessible. It's, it's big. We now have 120 kids. We have about 25 young adults who participate in training. And the kids do you know, therapy, activities, all of that. And so in 2017, we applied for a grant from the European Union. This was before my time. So the team, the team did. Um, to create a social enterprise that would employ young adults with disabilities. Wow. And they were trying to think, about what can we do? What, what will be cool? Uh, what will be helpful to the community? And there was a young guy with Down syndrome, and he really liked cooking. And he would help in the kitchen at Emily Aragog, and he would bake bread. And everyone was thinking, well, what if we made a bakery and we employed young adults with disabilities? Not only young adults, but also moms. <laughs> We're struggling here with the noise. The people left, but the door still banging for no reason at all. <laughs> Just to bother us. Um, you were so, saying, uh, why, why don't we open the bakery? Exactly, why don't we open a bakery that would employ people like Mikhail, young adults with disabilities, but also moms right. of kids with special needs. Because they also have a lot of challenges in the labor market. They need a more flexible schedule. Yeah. Um, frequently they have to be at home with the kids because there's no one to watch them. So we got the grant from the EU. It was a huge grant and wow. we were able to create this bakery. So then I came in on the scene just three months before the bakery opened. So that was like such a, such a cool time for me to become a part of it and help. Um, and so I feel like I and the bakery have grown together. Yeah. <laughs> You talk and I want to like go and change the world. Like I don't know what it is, and I like two two questions for you. Yeah, they are very different questions, but sure. The first one. So you coming here not knowing Armenian, right? right? Yeah. How did you How did you find that inter integration and like building this relationship? Because I see how you talk like with the team here, and I see how you. It's a community, and it is. how how did you find that whole like learning? Because now you speak fluent Armenian. Yeah. How was that transition for you? Just in case, because. I get this question all the time for people who are thinking of doing something like this. Yeah. <laughs> but if they don't speak Armenian, they're nervous, they're scared. And, and especially in Yumi, because 
like you were saying earlier offline when we were talking that it's easy to find a comfort zone in Yerevan yeah. of English speakers and just right. surround yourself with that community but in Gyumri I think it's harder so it's harder how was that transition for you how, how integrated do you feel right now yeah great questions so okay so shout out to Birthright I think for me I don't think I would ever even I never thought about really at all even visiting Armenia let alone living in Armenia so Birthright enabled me to do that and the opportunity of having a community already you know through birthright which eased my transition was huge for me yes. so when they offered a host family and not only a host family but one that didn't speak English I spe- which is what I specifically requested that forced me right I thought okay if I want to communicate at all with my host mom, I have to talk and then of course the, the classes were really helpful um, so that was that was the first year and of course it was hard might I also just add I'm learning Gurakan Hayden. Right. And I'm going out, you know, into the streets and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm improving, I can do this. And then people are speaking Gumru you know, yeah. the dialect. Um, so speaking of that, like for me, I speak Western Armenian. Yeah. And then it was the same, like I went to Armenia, I'm like, well, I speak Armenian, like I'll be fine. And then, and then they're speaking Eastern, I'm like, <laughs> what is that? Eat? Eat? Like a lot of that. So, but yeah, to your point, like by just integrating and immersing yourself, and you really, everybody starts understanding each other yeah. better. Absolutely. And at the beginning, you know, there's a lot of zerk, zerk, I say, like, you know, speaking with your hands, right? And smiling, and just, you know, like there is an understanding there. And as, as long as people see that you're trying, and you keep trying, there's this period where it's really painful and you're just like, no one understands what I'm saying, I don't understand them, it's rough. But then with time, something changes, something shifts, and you suddenly start communicating, actually, with your work. And it's an amazing thing. And yeah, and I say for me, that would only be possible. Because as, you met, as we were talking about earlier, it's too easy in Yerevan to find a place of, of comfort with other English speakers in our, in our case, right? Um, so for me, yeah, humor was vital to yeah. my language development and my integration. So now tell us a little bit of an overview about the baker because yeah. this is the part that people see. Yeah. This is the part that people can access. Maybe they don't know the impact behind it. Maybe they think they're just getting a coffee. Yeah. Um, I brought my parents here when we arrived. I'm like, the first thing we need to do is go to this bakery, and they loved it. And actually, like this stuff is amazing. So, yeah. tell us a little bit about it over here. Maybe we can go behind the scenes after. Totally, we can arrange that. Okay, awesome. Arrange that. So, I love what you just said, and it's a perfect segue into what I'm about to say. So, we are a social enterprise, and before I worked here, I, you know. I had an idea of what social enterprise was, but by working here, I really understood what a successful social enterprise is. And that is exactly what you just said. People come in, they have a coffee, they have a pastry, they love it, it's really high quality, they'll come again. Maybe they don't even know what the mission is. The products and the service are that quality (laughs) that there is no pity involved. No one's coming here, oh, these poor people, I need to support them. No, they literally love the environment, it's warm and friendly, which... Humri cafes aren't always known for that, you know, yeah. service. And so the service here is great. Our staff are smiling. The pastries are high quality, yeah. right? We use high quality ingredients, high quality coffee. We have really great, you know, oven and espresso machines because, yeah, we want people to come first and foremost. For the food, yeah. But we want them to leave looking at people with disabilities in a new light. We want them to leave and say, wow. You know, I just realized I had a stereotype. I believed the stereotype that people with Down syndrome or cerebral palsy were not capable. You can't hold a job. They totally can. Yeah. And you see it in action. Yeah. Um, and um, and I just love that. I, for me, yeah, I, I, Hovo is very close to me. He's one of our waiters. He has Down syndrome. And, you know, I I consider myself a pretty enlightened person when it comes to this subject, but even, you know, I'm learning new things related to this, uh, this field still, of course, and I've been working in this job for three years now. For, For me, the big lesson he taught me was that not only are people with disabilities capable and skilled, but they have unique capabilities and unique skills. Hopo is a better waiter than I could ever be. He's so joyful, he's so attentive, Grisha too, I mean both of them. They're so ready to help, so ready to please, they're smiling always, and yeah, they're uniquely skilled. 
they're uniquely skilled for this role. And so I think what I have learned is everyone has unique skill sets. Yeah. Everyone has potential, that. yeah, to fit in somewhere in our society and to have the dignity of work. Yeah. And I, I just, I love, I love being a part of that. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think this is the perfect segue for us to go and see some of the high quality yes. behind the scenes. I'm going to quickly finish yes. my coffee. Mm -hmm. We'll have our last sip. Okay, Sarah's gonna take us behind the scenes now. So we're going back in. Ooh. We've got a pretty small space back here, but this is where all the magic is done. Um, so I just wanted to ask you also before I leave, how can people get involved even if they're not in Armenia and not visiting mm -hmm. Gyuri yet? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you will and when you visit make sure to come to the bakery but yes. if you're not there yet how can they get involved? Great question. So we always have a lot of different cool campaigns going on. Right now we have two really interesting opportunities. One is called Our Daily Bread. This is a project that we started during COVID. Mm -hmm. So basically um, we have you know a lot of donors who send us money so that we can bake free bread to deliver to vulnerable members of the community. So that supports our staff as well as the community. We also have something called Cakes for Kiddos, where donors, again, can send us money to bake cakes, which we deliver to kids with special needs on their birthdays as a surprise. Um, and then finally, we have um, a cellar that we're trying to build out so that we can expand, but we need to raise some money to, um, yeah, for all of the construction costs related to yeah. that. And, but best of all is to just come visit us and experience our environment awesome. for yourself. And for the donations, I'll include the link uh, in the description, you guys. Yeah. So, but what's the website, like, where should they go? Um, our Facebook page is best. Facebook. We have the links there. Also Instagram. Okay, so I'll link to the Facebook page so you guys can go explore, see the campaigns they do. She does a great job with marketing. <laughs> so you'll see all the photos and everything too. So. <laughs> Check them out, follow them. When you come visit, I think there's like a wedding outside or something is going on. Uh, and then baptisms today, weddings today. Yeah, there was a baptism being celebrated here today. Slamming doors, everything. Slamming doors. It's an exciting city. It's a very action uh, video today. So on that note, we're going to go to the next state, next destination, not station. Thank you so <laughs> much, Sarah. Hacho <laughs> Tayarana. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, thank you so coming. much. And then I'll probably come back before I leave Yumri and, and have more more pastry. That's, that's okay. common. <laughs> okay, now that we had our coffee, got to know Sarah and the team, obviously definitely come visit Arekar Bakery when you're in Yumri. Now we're gonna go to the church and then a couple of more places. I'm just waiting for the cars to cross the street. This is the church. It's actually under construction, so we can't go in. 
so we're gonna walk around a little bit and then we'll take you to the next stop but on, as we walk I wanted to share a fun fact with you guys I don't know if you guys know this so Gimri is known to be the city the city of black tooth because all the architecture you'll notice or not all but a lot of the architecture is made with black tooth which is a, a volcanic um, stone and then Yerevan is the pink city because it's made with or the architecture is done by pink tooth so fun fact of the day okay let's walk around and then we'll go to the next stop Since we were talking with Sarah about volunteering at Birthright Armenia in Gyumri, I thought I'll show you guys their office. We're not going to be able to go in today, but this is where their office is located. It's super, super cool inside. It's a really nice space. I'm thinking of doing a video or an episode where I actually come to Gyumri to volunteer so and stay with the host family and I'll show you guys the job site, the host family. It's really windy <laughs> and I'll show you guys inside the office. So we'll save the interior for that episode but for now I was passing by and I thought I'll show you guys just to kind of close the circle on the idea of volunteering in Gyurmi it's an option and everything will be kind of facilitated to, for you through Birthright Armenia okay let's go to the next spot Oh my god, is this like a new bulbulak thing that I'm supposed to try? Or should I stick to the ones that look familiar? These are actually pretty great ones. They're really cold. I'm enjoying how much cooler temperature wise um, Gyumri is compared to Yerevan well it's hot in both places really hot but it's a bit cooler in Gyumri look at this I don't think I'm ever leaving Gyumri it even has each one has a different pressure <laughs> okay I'm in heaven I love this also, quick shout out to Anai Zadian. The shirt is designed by her, and you can find it on dadik.ca. That's T A T I K.ca. I'll put the link in the description too. Quick shameless plug. Guys, I'm entering to the oldest barber shop in Armenia. This is from the 1940s, and I just met the whole team, and they're amazing. And I'm going to show you the inside real quick. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, merci. Look how cool the chairs are. And then the resident birds. And this mirror is from the 1800s.
So this was the oldest barber shop in Armenia. Such an awesome team. I feel like we're already friends. We talked for quite some time. We had coffee together. This is the outside. And it's super close to the main square where Harabarag is. On that note, I'm starting to get hungry. So I think we're gonna head to our food destination. Okay, for the food, we're going to Gyumri House of Garden, which is also on Apovian Street where we were for the Arekak Bakery. So we're gonna go check it out there. I'm really, really hungry, so I'm excited. And then after, we're gonna go to Ponchik Monchik for some Ponchik and Monchik. But on that note, I really wanna mention this website that is uh, a great resource if you're planning to visit Gyumri. It's called visitgyumri.com. I'll also add the link in the description. Um, they have it by category for the museums, they have restaurants, they have like different things. So it's super cool to check that out. Uh, I wish I was here for longer and went to a different restaurant every day. Um, there's another one called Cherkatsi Zor. It's a bit further, that's why I chose to do this one for today's video. Um, it's a bit further down that one, but it's they specialize in fish. So definitely worth going there. Okay, so this is the place we'll go in. They have concerts here, I think, three times a week. Okay, my hair is flying everywhere. I decided to sit upstairs because it's a uh, uh, sunny and it has a really cool view. Okay, I'm so hungry. Let's do this. You know what they say when in Gyumri, Ganats. I also got the pork barbecue. So let's see. As I wait for the food, so I asked him about what's gonna happen, like what are all these things. And apparently this whole place will be a hotel. And I'm assuming that this will be kind of like the mingle area downstairs and then they're gonna have like concerts and stuff. So it's kind of cool actually. It's a nice place to be. Okay, the food is here. It looks amazing. But they didn't bring any utensils. Am I just like supposed to? Should I ask? Hello? I think I got the wrong number. Okay. Situation has been fixed. Okay, let's try this. I'm really, really hungry. very uh, greasy mmm oh it's really good okay I'm gonna go eat you guys and then we'll go to the next spot change of plans before going to the ponchik ponchik place I found out this hidden bar maybe it wasn't that hidden but like for me it felt cool and I heard music and I'm gonna like sit here for a bit Look, it says takeaway cocktails. Where are we taking them to? I don't know. But this place looks really cool, so I'm gonna go in. Let me show you outside too. That's somebody's laundry. And then this is a bar. This was such a cool place. I got to hang out with the team and they're really, really nice, so I really recommend it. The Toll. 
So yeah, definitely come check them out. So we're gonna go to Ponchik Monchik now. We're gonna have some Ponchik and then we're gonna head to Yerevan. It's getting really chilly here actually, you guys. As I walk to Ponchik Ponchik, have you guys been to Gimri? Let me know in the comments if yes, favorite places, any recommendations, let me know. We're here, it's right across from the church and the square. Okay, I'm gonna go get something and then I'm gonna call my Gigi to go back to Yerevan. It's like 8.30ish right now here and it's still light. It's Ponchik time! not zooming probably I'm happy I'm a mess and I don't care okay time to call my cab go back to Yerevan Thank you so much you guys for coming to Gimri with me. Where else do you want me to go? Let me know. I'll try to go. I'll eat more ponjik. Hopefully you get to visit Gimri soon. It's really, really cool here. The vibes are just so different and chill. Love you all so much. Thank you again. Love you. I already said that. There's a lot of babies around. Okay, yalla. Bye.